you just reflect on how much your life has changed since you were born through science and technology and how much has changed since your parents were children and since your grandparents were children, I think that kind of answers the question, right? It's just it, our lives are continually yeah. being transformed and um, if we want to solve these huge sustainability issues and get to these 2030 goals, then I don't see how it can be out of the equation when it's already transformed our lives so much. I'm a bit sympathetic to, did you see Jeffrey West's talk? Because I think we have a love affair with technology like we have a love affair with capitalism and actually it's quite easy to just keep coming up with short-term technological solutions and I see that a lot. I feel like um, a lot of the responses to climate change are how can we invent little balloons that will go up and, and see where there's dry and where there's water and we can, you know, constantly new technology and that will only provide a solution for, for the short term and actually what we need is a total paradigm shift in the way we're interacting with resources and the way we're thinking about our position on this planet and who we are and that's, I don't, I think science has the answers to that but it's a different kind of approach from perhaps just this focus on technological solutions to immediate short-term problems. I think without public support, science can't work as an enterprise. I mean, I know in the US it's become increasingly um, resourced by industry for various reasons. And that can, it's good to have a mix. I think you really have to have a mix, otherwise um, industry can bring all sorts of strengths to doing research, but there are also downsides. There's less sharing, there's less openness. There's, um, so I think that you have to have both. And absolutely you need government support of this enterprise. I think it goes back to what I was saying about how much science and technology has changed human life in such a short time and in ways that are almost too fast for legislators and governments to keep up and without, you know, <coughs> excuse me, the technology I was talking about, CRISPR, it just has so many ethical ramifications and we, 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 we have to, we have to be at the we have to be thinking through like what kind of species do we want to make ourselves to be, what kind of environment do we want to create. It's, it's a conversation that has to happen alongside the, the thinking about regulation and legislation. Like without that conversation we don't know where we're going in the longer term. Um, so I, I think that because of the impact of science on our lives, on our societies, on the way we interact with each other, I don't see how it can happen without a conversation about ethics. And I think that's an example of just the how fast things are moving and how difficult it is to just um, keep things in the box <laughs> once they're out and um, there's been so many conversations about how can we uh, kind of keep keep tabs on this technology. How can we good, make it for good use and not bad use? And how can and and we don't have the mechanisms in place yet for actually turning those conversations into something practical that's going to make a difference. And I think the whole world is asking questions about that right now and, and trying to come up with things very fast. But nothing nothing I've seen so far is is profoundly compelling. <laughs> I think people are still just trying to figure out how we can, but as I say, it's just the pace of change and the pace of these advances and we, we don't, our, our legislative systems are, they're just, they don't work that quickly. So there's going to be this, this lag and, and things like that are probably going to happen. I don't see how there's another way. I don't pretend to have a lot of expertise in this, but I, I, there's been a flurry of excitement around AI and robots, and but 
and, that, and a lot of that is justified, but I think we're still a long way from having the kinds of agents that we would, that would, that we would really need to integrate with human life. And I, I don't, um, I mean, we're already in a society where we're so interfaced with our computers that we're already kind of, it's a very different, it's, it's not, you couldn't exactly call our world entirely human anymore. Um, but I don't know that we'll get, I don't know that, that things will change quite as fast as, as media stories give the impression of, I think. You know, like, like um, driverless cars, I think there was a, predictions that we were all going to have driverless cars in California tomorrow and I don't think that's going to happen because it's just harder than, than people had expected to really solve those really human problems. <laughs>